Hello crafty friends! It is Friday, which means it is time for another 4 on Friday collaboration with my friend Danny. I hope you'll stick around, see what I'm going to use in this week's video, and find out what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. If you haven't yet been to my channel for a 4 on Friday video, I'll tell you a little bit about it before we get started. Every few weeks, my friend Danny and I team up to create four new projects using one product, technique, or tool. Now, the product, technique, or tool that we each use is different, but each of us will be creating four new projects. I do a video here on my channel, and Danny will be sharing her projects over on her blog. I do have a link to that blog post at the top of the description box below, so make sure you check that out when you're done here and leave her some love. I know that she would enjoy that. If you would like to see past 4 on Friday videos, I do have a playlist also linked in the description box. For today, I'm going to be using the We Are Memory Keepers Envelope Punch Board, and I'll be doing a little bit of measuring or figuring out measurements with their Envelope Generator app. Now, just a disclaimer here on this app, it actually was not updated with the latest or it won't work with the latest version of app. Apple iOS or Mac OS. So I had to use it on my old phone. I think this is like a 5S or something. So if you have an older iPad or iPhone, you should still be able to use this. If you have an Android, I'm not sure if this is an app in your app store. Oops. So while I was getting ready for this video this morning, I did pay for an app. I think it's called Envelope Punch Board. It was only 99 cents, so no big deal. But guys, I don't think it's going to work because the numbers I got on here are completely different than the We Are Memory Keepers app, and these numbers did not work for the test envelope I did. So you will want to purchase this at your own risk. Um, right now, I would not suggest it. I am going to keep playing with it just since I bought it, and I'll see if I can figure it out. The reason that I am using the envelope punch board today came about because of a recent QOTV or question of the video. It was from channel member Karen C and she wanted to know if you use store-bought envelopes or made your own envelopes. And many of you like myself do usually use store-bought. Sometimes you'll use your punch board for odd size cards. But also I had a lot of people say they had a punch board and they hadn't used it or they would like to know how to use it for other things. So that's why I thought today I would create four new projects with it. I'm hoping this will be kind of quick that since I'm just making envelopes, on the first one, I will go over slowly exactly how to use the envelope punch board. And then after that, I'll just kind of speed through that process, but I will make sure to tell you any measurements that I use. I plan on making some mini slimline envelopes with it. I want to make envelopes for a little custom card set that I have a crayon box holder actually for from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm not sure on the others. Maybe we'll try an envelope liner because I know a couple of you mentioned that as well. As I start the process and I bring in more products or tools, I will let you know that in the voiceover. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! The first envelopes that I'm going to make today are going to be for mini slim lines. Now you know normally I just use the ones I get at the Dollar Tree, but I thought it would be kind of fun to jazz them up a little bit and since I have lots of 12 by 12 paper, I could make them pretty. To figure out the dimensions, I did use the envelope generator app. You just open it up and you put in your card width 
as six and a quarter and your card height as three and a quarter and then you click generate to find out what size your paper needs. The app tells me that for a slimline card or a mini slimline envelope, I will need a piece of paper that is eight inches square and the first punch will be at two and seven eighths inches. For the envelopes, I'm going to be using pieces of paper from this Hobby Lobby Paper Studio Pad. I thought some of the colors in it went well with the flowers on the paper. And I did grab a couple pieces that normally I probably wouldn't use because they're more for scrapbooking. I trimmed each one down to an 8 inch square and only one edge will have the flower border on it and you will see there I have those pieces left over and I will actually be using those later. So once I had both of those pieces trimmed down to 8 by 8 it was time to get out my envelope punch board. When I get out my punch board I usually pull out the little bone folder first so it doesn't get covered up by pattern paper and then I double check my first punch. So this time I'm going to have those flowers be on the right going vertical when I do my first punch and then the next one you'll see that I have them at the bottom I think. But you just place your paper at the 2 and 7 eighths inch mark, punch the notch and then use your tool to score along the line on the board. Now I go lightly three or four times instead of pressing too hard and breaking my paper. Once that's done, you'll rotate your paper 90 degrees counterclockwise and then you line up that little blue piece there on the punch along the line of your score. Once that's in place, you hold your paper, punch and score again. So you just continue this same process of punching and scoring until you have four score lines. And you'll be able to see as I keep doing that, that the shape of the envelope will be shown in the score lines. This is a good way to know if you're going to get about the right size envelope before you go too far. Once that was all punched and scored, I folded back on each of those score lines and you'll notice that my bottom flap, because of the skinny width of this envelope, it does run up into the top flap. So I went ahead and brought back in my envelope punch board to see if punching the rounded corners on those would work and you'll just see if you put it in the top of the punch it does a rounded corner. So I punched all four of those. Unfortunately it was still hanging over the top so I brought in my trimmer so I could trim some of that off. On this first one I lined it up so just a little bit came off of the top and to keep it straight I tried to use one of the lines on my trimmer with that score line at the top. Now I will tell you later I ended up taking more off because I didn't quite like the way this looked. It went right to that line but I thought it looked a little odd for the envelope. I did trim off the top flap as well to that same number. Then I brought in my ATG so I could close the envelope or tape the bottom flap to the two inner ones. I just put a strip of adhesive where I knew that flap would cover and then I adhered that in place. You can hand deliver them this envelope with no problem. If you are going to mail it, I would suggest using a white address label on the front. And now for the second one, you'll notice that instead of having the flowers on the right, that I did turn them to the bottom for my first punch. Now the rest of this process is exactly the same with punching and scoring, so I did pretty much zoom through it, but I did want you to see how I cut the flap differently to make it look a little better in my opinion. I probably went an inch and a half into each of those side flaps, and you'll see here then, it doesn't go quite as far up into the envelope, and because my corner rounder won't work on these angles, I did bring in a pair of small scissors and just rounded those by hand. For this envelope, once again, you could hand deliver or because of the lighter paper in the background, you could probably write your address right there on the envelope. And here's a look at the two finished mini slim lines with those cards inside. Thank you. 
This next project is probably my favorite of the day. I bought some of these clear crayon boxes at the Dollar Tree a few months ago and I always knew that I wanted to use them for some little mini card kits. Off camera I peeled the label off of one and later you'll see how I cover that but if you don't want to cover it you could probably use maybe some hand sanitizer or rubbing alcohol to get that sticky off of there. And you might recognize these strips of pattern paper. These were the leftovers from the mini slimline envelopes that I just made. And these are going to be great for these little cards. Right after I got these crayon boxes, I figured out the perfect card size and the perfect envelope. Now I came to the envelope dimensions a little bit with the envelope generator, a little bit just messing around with dimensions and testing it out. I found that the best size was for the inner card to fold to two and a half by three and a half and my envelope needed a five and a quarter inch square and the first punch was at three inches. For my card bases I am just using heavyweight white cardstock and I cut a strip first that was seven inches tall and then I cut it into pieces that were two and a half inches wide. That way when it's folded down the final size is two and a half by three and a half. I just cut cardstock until I had eight card bases. I brought back in the scraps of pattern paper from earlier and I cut those into pieces that were two and a half by three and a half to cover the entire card front. I did the trimming, I would kind of look at the ruler on my paper trimmer to see which way the pattern looked best in that size and here's a look at those eight pieces. Next it was time to cut the paper for the envelopes themselves and because of the size five and a quarter inch square you can get four from a 12 by 12 piece of paper. So I cut four from the first pattern and then once again I brought in some leftovers or scraps from other projects for those remaining four. Off camera I put my little pieces of pattern paper onto each of the card fronts. I did not put any sentiment on these just so they could be used for any occasion. Now we're going to bring back in the envelope punch board and make our envelopes. Once again this piece of paper is five and a quarter inches wide and the first punch was at three inches. After that was punched and scored, I rounded the corners and put one envelope together so you can see it. I think these are so adorable, tiny little envelopes. And then once I knew that first one would work well, I used an assembly line process on the remaining seven envelopes. Once all of those were done, I put each of the cards into an envelope and placed them into the crayon box. Now while I'm working on that, I do want to tell you that I kind of got this idea from Jessie Kate Creates. I have shared her video on my community tab before, but I will also link it in the description box below. She likes to keep little note cards and envelopes like this on hand, so if she's out and about and needs something encouraging to leave with somebody, she has something right there in her purse. And I thought that this crayon box was a perfect holder to keep them safe while they're there. This next step is completely optional. I decided to use one scrap of the pattern paper I had left to decorate my box. I cut two strips that would fit nicely on the front. I think it was about two and three quarters inches wide. I just kind of eyeballed it. And then for the front one, I cut a piece for the bottom part and a piece for the top flap. Now on the back you'll notice there's a little piece at the top with the hinge. I did not put any paper there, I just cut it for the bottom below that. I made sure when I was putting the adhesive on here that I covered the back pretty well. I went around the outsides and a couple through the center just to helpfully, just to hopefully, sorry, help hold these on. And I just thought that added something fun. And yeah, it was super simple to make these and I had to go out and find more boxes so I could do some more of these. 
Let me know in the comment section below if you're going to be on the lookout for these little boxes. Now if your Dollar Tree doesn't have them, sometimes Office Depot will. I will link the site online below. It's nothing you can purchase online, but at least you can see if your local store has any in stock. For the next envelopes, I will be making some custom ones for the cards I made for the very first sheet load rewind, which I will link the video in the description box below. I wanted to kind of match some of the metallic in the pattern paper, so I got out this fun shiny pattern from the paper pad that normally I probably wouldn't use on cards. Now for the first envelope, I used the instructions on the punch board. I followed the cutting and punching guides, but I will tell you that I didn't care for this. It seemed pretty tight on the card, like it was more of a square. So when I do the second one, I'll tell you the dimensions I use and I thought it fit much better. Now you will notice when I'm cutting this pattern paper, I do have it face down and that is just because sometimes the shininess of the paper messes with the lighting and then with my camera. I cut that down, I think it was an 8 inch square, and I did my punching and scoring on my envelope board until I had that final envelope complete. On this one I adhered it so the shiny was on the outside, but for the second one again you'll see how I switch it up just a little bit. Now I'm not sure if you can tell here, but I did have a little bit of trouble fitting it in there. It's like the envelope was the same exact height as the card. Now it works and I'm going to use this envelope, but let me tell you how I did the next one just a little bit differently. Apparently I made that second one off camera, but don't worry, I will tell you the dimensions. Now this one, instead of putting the pattern paper out, I put it on the inside. I just thought that was extra fun and it's almost like an envelope liner. Now for this one, I use the envelope generator app, which I am so sad that it's no longer updated. I think we need a talk to We Are Memory Keepers about that, and I came up with the dimensions for the second one. The app suggested a paper size of 8 and 1 8 inches, which is the same as on the punch board, but instead of punching at 3 and 3 quarters, the app tells you to make your first punch at 3 and 5 8 inches, and it just fits so much better in that second envelope. Once again, this next step is totally optional. I just thought when you're getting ready to give these cards out, this is a fun way to keep them closed. I grabbed a scrap of the pattern paper I used for the envelope, cut a 3 quarter inch width strip, cut the ends in angles, and I'm going to use this kind of like a washi tape to keep that flap closed. For my fourth and final project for the day, I'm going to be making an alternative with the July 2021 sheet load of cards. If you have already put it together or watch my videos, you know that sometimes putting that twine there on the left side was a little bit difficult. So I'm going to be using my envelope punch board to make a notch to make that just a little bit easier. I did go ahead and pre-cut all my pieces of paper. I got out some pre-printed sentiments I had. And now let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start off by putting notches in my pattern paper piece for the front and my card base. Now instead of having two pieces on the front like the sketch calls for, I got out one piece of pattern paper and cut it to five and a quarter inches wide by two and a quarter inches tall. Just like if I was making an envelope, I line the top up and the punch on the pattern paper gets made at 1 and 1 8 inches. Now instead of rotating it, I'm going to flip it over and make another punch at that same 1 and 1 8 inches. Now I have notches in the top and bottom to thread the string around later. For the card base, which is the same as on the original instructions, it is five and a half inches wide by two and a half inches tall when folded. I'm going to do basically the same thing, but my first punch, or the only punch I guess, will be at one and one quarters inches, just an eighth longer than the last one. I adhered those two punched pieces together 
centering everything as best as I could. And then I pulled in some seam binding ribbon from Stampin' Up to put around the notches. I wanted to place some adhesive on the back to make it stay in place. And then I wrapped just a strip of ribbon around that and tied a bow on the front. And this is where I wish I would have stopped myself and thought. Originally, I wanted the entire card to open up so you would have more room to write inside. But I tied the ribbon around the back side. So you'll see later when I go to open it how I thought I would be able to. I ran into a little issue. So just a heads up, if you want to do it this way to not adhere the ribbon to the back of the card, but to the back of the inside. While I finished tying that bow, which let me tell you it took longer than it should have, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. Today's question is totally inspired by happy little accidents. I would like to know what's the last happy accident you made and how did you make it work? Let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered the question and would like me to see it. Up on screen now is my last happy little accident, and you can't see it, but at the top left of that bottom rainbow is a blue smudge from when I was inking up my stamps. All I did was layer my rainbows later so that that was covered up by the one on top of it. I had a little camera glitch, so you'll see my card is a little bit further along now. I have the piece of pattern paper on the background card, and I also rounded the top corners of one of the sentiments and placed it on the card. This then got adhered to the front center of my backer, and I think here is where I figured out I couldn't open the card like I wanted to. I might have literally said, argh, out loud, just like there with my hands, but I decided, you know what? This is just another happy little accident. I'm gonna make it work. So I folded it back where the ribbon was tied and just tried to make a crease there. And you know what? It works just fine and the end recipient will never know that's the way it was supposed to have been. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made today's projects using the envelope punch board. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget to go see what Danny has created. She's linked in that description box below. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.